Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. We thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak through my vocal cords. Think through my mind to bring wisdom, knowledge, and good understanding of the word of God. I invoke the anointing of the teacher, the anointing of the prophet as well, to be in operation and demonstration today, to now solidify some things in the spirit and solidify some things in the hearts and the minds of your people. We thank you. We covered the gifts of the spirit to be in operation and demonstration as the Holy Spirit wills. Father, we thank you that every ear is anointed to hear. Every heart is open and ready to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. So, Father, we thank you this day. We give you praise for the authority and the dominion that you've given us into the earth. And so whatever it is that you've been placing in my heart and in my bosom of my spirit to be released into your people, let it come forth with demonstration, with power, with might. And she crescete cum brasite de brasite de brosocunda. Father, we give you glory. We give you praise in advance. In advance right now, we give you praise for the word of God that comes forth. That we are submitted to your word. We receive your word and we act on your word and we see the results. You've declared to us that this is a year of the catch up, a year of divine, a supernatural acceleration. And Father, we put you in remembrance of that word that you spoke expressly to us. And so we thank you. We thank you for this ministry. We thank you for its local and its global impact. And we give you praise. Now, I pray over each and every partner, supporter, member of this ministry, every visitor that's tuning in today. I speak life over them right now. I speak life over their households. I come against every demonic force that has tried to attack them, that has tried to distract them even in this season that we've been going through. And right now, in the name of Jesus, I declare a great gathering of the armies of the living God, a great gathering of the eagles to sit at the feet of Jesus as we begin to receive your word like never before. And Father, I thank you. You said those that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. And so we hunger after you today. Fill us today. Fill us. Glory to God. Wreck our ignorance with your word today. We give you praise in advance for it. Now I speak peace over every household. I speak peace over every situation. Yeah, I come against turmoil. I come against it now in Jesus' name. That thing that has harassed you over and over again, I bind it in the name of Jesus and I command it to go now. So, Father, we give you glory for it. And we give you praise in the name of Jesus. And everybody in agreement say amen, amen. Type amen for me. Type amen for me. Type amen. Glory to God. Well, I want to get ready to get into something today. And I really, I believe that this is going to be one of the most important messages I've ever preached. This is part of my assignment. This is part of the thing God has called me to do. And as I've been studying and preparing for this, there has been a refreshing, a renewing of revelation, of insight, of wisdom. And I listen, I've been ready I, I was ready to jump into this thing today. I want you to get your expectation on high. And so I want to welcome all of our first timers. Welcome our Spirit of Fire Nation. We love you guys. Go ahead and share this with as many people as you can. Share it to your social media platforms. Let's get into this word. Um, as I've been teaching, we started dealing with um, a series dealing with the believer's authority. And so uh, I started about a week or so ago um, dealing with it's time to dominate. And I heard this word dominate. And so if I could retitle this series is is the uh, the the dominion. The, I, I, just, I keep hearing dominion there is like to have authority and to rule and to reign in every area of life. And God is saying, I want my people to rule at the level that Jesus died for them to rule at. And so he's saying, I want you to listen to this word today. Something is going to break. Something is going, but I sense it already. 
And I, I'm, I'm going to get into this word. So let me calm down because I'm so excited. Something is stirring in my spirit. And it's always been God's original design for us to have dominion in the earth and to be fruitful and to multiply and to subdue and to replenish. And he blessed his creation and empowered us for success to live out the dream that he has for us to have fellowship with him and to rule and to reign with him throughout eternity. But not only does he want us to rule and reign in um, throughout eternity, but the scripture even says he wants us to rule and reign in this life through and by Christ Jesus. And it's God's design for, uh, for us to rule, for us to reign, for us to have dominion. Now I'm invoking the spirit of wisdom to be upon me, to begin to impart, to begin to direct. And whatever it is you need to hear, I need for you to draw in the spirit. There is no distance in the spirit. I know we're not together physically, but right now we're together via this stream. And I need for you to now begin to draw on the spirit of God to begin to speak to you about situations. Now watch this. One of the things that um, I want to deal with today, one of the major things is us walking in this authority, but I'm going to talk to you about even dealing with demonic forces, what they are, how to deal with them. And this is going to be something I'm going to and in the beginning of this, I'm going to go line by line, precept by precept. And I got to just do it as to how it was given to me to do. And I want to be obedient to that. Now, dealing with the believer's authority, I want to begin to give some examples of this authority. Jesus said in uh, Luke 10, 19, behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you in Luke 10, 19. So he says this, I'm going to give you authority over all of Satan's ability and nothing shall by any means hurt you or harm you. Now I want to go to the book of Mark chapter four. I want to go here first to show you some examples of this authority, because when God blessed man and um, when he created man, he blessed man to have dominion to subdue, to dominate. And so now when sin entered in, there was a disconnection. Jesus came to reconnect us into our rightful place, okay? As where Adam and Eve were in the garden before they sinned. And so God had given, and we talked about God had given Adam this ability and a, this power, this, this creativity to function at a hundred percent capacity. And he began to name the animals and whatever he named it, whatever he called it, it was. And so we begin to talk about whatever you begin to call your situation is what it's going to be because you have been given this dominion and this authority. And what Satan has tried to do is use your authority against you to now keep you at a place and to keep you subordinate to him. Whereas we're going to see that you've been raised far above him and far above every principality and power that he's working with. Now, what before I want to get ahead of myself, um, because I got something I really want to sow into you. Now in the book of Mark chapter four, verses 35 through 41, now, I'm going to do a lot of reading in the beginning of this right now, and then I'm going to kind of get into the meat of what I want to talk about. And it says in the same day, verse 35, that when the even was come, he saith unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. This is Jesus speaking. And when he had sent him, uh, sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind <laughs> and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, the sea. Now to rebuke means part of that definition means to stop, to cease no more. Okay. And he said to the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. So Jesus exercised authority over creation. He exercised authority over the elements. And then he said unto them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, what manner of man is this? 
that even the wind and the sea obey him. Nobody had seen anything like this. They had not seen someone control the environment with words. They hadn't seen somebody do something and operate at this level of power and authority. But Jesus was demonstrating something to them. Because now in John 14, verse 12, there's a lot that we can unpack in that passage, but I got to pull out what I need to deal with today. He said in John 14 and 12, he says, verily, verily, or truly, truly. So whenever he said verily, verily, he was drawing attention to the statement that he was about to make to show how important it is. I need you to listen to what I'm getting ready to tell you. He says, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, this is Jesus speaking, he that believeth on me, he that believeth on me, who is that? Whosoever, whoever believes on him, that means you, that means me, that means us, whoever he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. Watch this, and greater works than these shall he do. Why? Because I go unto my father. So he says, the person that believes on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And then he said, greater works. Now, what was a work that we just saw him do in Mark four? He took authority over the elements. He took authority over the wind. He took authority over creation. So he wasn't intimidated by what was out in front of him because watch this, the authority that was upon him and the words that came out of him begin to control the elements, the matter, the environment, the physical surroundings around him were controlled by him. Now, I need you to understand. I want you to, to get this image. And he says this. He says, now watch this. Also, Jesus laid hands on the sick. He raised the dead. The maim were healed. He multiplied resources. Two fish, five loaves. He gave it unto the father. He blessed it, took it before the father and blessed what he had in his hands. Come on, glory to God. And he, watch this, he used what he had to bless what he had. And that it multiplied what he had. Somebody, I need to hear that. That God, watch this, you have authority. You've been complaining about the little you have when God says you need to take your authority and bless what you have. As you speak well over what you have, it'll multiply what you have. And you need to, oh, glory to God. What's happening now is God is saying you're about to walk into another level of power, authority, signs, wonders, and miracles. As you take this word, you begin to believe this word, you begin to exercise this word, and you're going to begin to see the dominion, authority, and power that you have. Okay, settle down, Mike. Cause I, I, I want to, I want to, I'm going to sow this into you. And he says this, watch this greater works shall you do because I go unto my father. If he didn't go to the father, we couldn't get born again. If he didn't die, was raised from the dead. And then he was, watch this when he was raised from the dead. And I'll tell you, and I'll show you, he was seated at the right hand of the father. And that way now we can become born again to now become the sons of God to receive. And I've already taught this prior that you receive the spirit of adoption, whereby we can cry, Abba, Father, God, our daddy. So you and I are sons and daughters of God. Say this, say, I'm a son of God or I'm a daughter of God. So you need to say that. Say that I'm a, I say that I'm a son of God. That means I have all equal rights and privileges as the Lord Jesus because I'm an heir of God, joint heirs with Jesus Christ. So I got to meditate on that. I got to think about that. I got to dwell on that. You got to make sure that you understand who you are, your identity, that now I'm an ambassador for Christ. I'm a king and a priest unto my God. I'm a ruler in touch with him. I have authority. I have dominion. I have power. I have ability. Just like a king legislates by decreeing things. I legislate in my life by decreeing and declaring things. I bless the work of my hands. I bless what I have in my house. I bless what I have in my bank account. I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, I'm getting ahead, but I want you to stay with this because you need to begin to exercise. You've been worrying about something you could have changed all along. Now, now come on, come on, come on, come on. So we, 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 we um, quoted um, Luke 10, 19 and 20 
Um, but I, I want to read something here. I quoted Luke 10, 19, but I want to read this along with verse 20. Luke 10, 19, verse 20. And it reads here. It says, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Watch this. And over all the power of the enemy. You need to underline that, highlight it, mark it over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. I've given, oh man, I hear the question. I hear the question. If you said this, God, that nothing shall by any means hurt me, but I've dealt with a lot of hurt. How come I've dealt with hurt and been hurt if you said that nothing shall by any means hurt me? I'm going to get into that. Oh, I'm going to get into that. I'm glad you asked that question because this is a promise of him. We're going to get into it. We're going to get into it. And nothing shall by any means hurt you, notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Now, this is the part I, I want to bring out real quick in verse 20. Jesus said, he says, now don't rejoice because the spirits are subject to you, but rather that your names are written in heaven. Don't get caught up in the byproduct of what the, the real root of this thing is. Now that you're born again, now that you're coming with me, your names are written in heaven. That's the real thing you need to rejoice about. But now watch this. I got to show this to you that he says that the spirits are subject unto you. That jumped off the page at me that we need to focus on. The spirits are subject to you. They are subordinate to you. Demonic forces are subordinate to you because I'm getting ready to get into something here. And I'm going to deal with some people call it. I don't want to call it demonology, nothing like that, but dealing with the demonic realm, the spirit realm and things that we have authority over and to explain some things to you. Now, watch this. Jesus said that the spirits are subject to you, that if they are subject to you. That means they have to obey you. They have to obey you. The spirits are subject to you. Satan and his demonic forces are subject to you. The devil can't make you do anything you don't want to do. The spirits are subject to you. You need to write that down. You need to highlight that. You need to realize that. Wait a minute. Oh, man. Oh, man, I'm, I'm hitting this because I, I really want to hit this so bad because the images that have been portrayed in media, movies, society, if you see these movies, even dealing with, and this is why even horror movies and, and movies dealing with demonic spirits. And when you see things like, you know, some weak priest coming up and being whipped by the devil and being killed and tormented, that is a wrong depiction. Satan wants to control the narrative by controlling the airways to give you the image that he's stronger than you. And that is a flat out lie from the pit of hell. The Bible says that the spirits are subject to us, not us unto them. Not one demonic force has control or authority or rule over you. You have complete dominion and mastery over each and every one of them. I want you to get that. So you don't have to be afraid of the devil. This is important to get this. Because you're going to have to, and all of us, have to flush out every fear that has been deposited in us over the years of the images we've seen that the devil is stronger than God and that the devil is stronger than us. You got to flush out that image and get a new image that I'm, I rule him. So even if he manifested right before your very eyes, that you were not, because watch this, when he shows up, the spirit of fear is abiding in him, is resting upon him. And he comes to bring fear that is gripping, fear that is suffocating. And then I'm telling you now, you have authority to shatter all of that stuff in the name of Jesus. You hear me say this, I have authority over all the ability of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt me. I'm going to say this. So if something attacks you to hurt you, it's in violation of the covenant agreement we have with God. 
You're in violation. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me say something real quick. I want to drop this here. Um, a couple of few weeks ago, I was attacked in my body um, with COVID. And it was when, when the night that it happened, the day that it happened, I was preaching intentionally on healing. I said this. I was about to just say, you know what? I'll play something else, do a replay, and I just get some rest. I was like, no, I'm going to attack this thing that's trying to attack me. And so I hit it head on with the word of God. Now, what many people didn't know, the minute I, I, air, I got off the air, I, went, I had to go to the restroom. I'm not trying to be vulgar or nothing, but I had to go to the restroom real quick. And all of a sudden, I felt these chills come up in my body. It was almost like, because this had attacked my body before, not COVID, but I'd had an episode a couple of years ago. Whereas I'm talking about, it was trying to violently shake. And all of a sudden, because I knew the authority, because I was just filling myself with the word. I had just preached the word. And as that my body tried to shake, I said, no, you will not do this. And I command you to settle down now in the name of Jesus. And just like that, every symptom began to dissipate. I said, I will not allow you to override me. I rule you. You don't rule me. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And I instantly did it. I said, you will not do this. And the thought that came to me was, remember what happened before? And you had to go to the hospital? I said, not this time. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And body, you are subject unto me. And I command you to settle down now. And I think that night I had a fever, but the fever broke. It didn't take long. It was just like some little symptoms. And really, it was just a thing of just going in isolation or a quarantine for the sake of being in quarantine. And my body recovered quickly. I was doing fine. I was doing well. Yes, I did take the vaccine. I was already vaccinated and all that stuff. But my trust wasn't in the vaccination. My trust has always been in the word of God, the blood of Jesus and the power of the covenant of divine healing and health that I have with me and my God, just like you have. And I will not allow. Watch this. And nothing shall by any means hurt me or harm me. See, you don't know that you won't ever see it if you don't exercise it. You have to exercise and believe what you say into your body. Some of you have been hounded by chronic things from the past that the enemy has tried to get you to settle in your sickness. And I come against it in the name of Jesus because it's been so long it's tried to wear on your faith to make you think, well, I'll just adjust my life to live with it. Uh-uh. Heck no. No, you resisted every step of the way and you begin to declare because sickness and disease comes from the pit of hell itself. It comes from the root of sin that entered into the earth. We were never designed by God to die. Our bodies were actually created to regenerate itself to live forever. See, OK, because I'm going to begin to tap into some things. She said, uh-uh, uh-uh, science says, see, see, see you, you got to get your mind out of the natural and get into the original intent of what God created for us to do and function in. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. See, see, when sin, are in it, sin entered in, death entered in. The end. That, that's a whole nother teaching. I, I'll teach you a little bit more on that later. But watch this. Now, watch this. Jesus says, don't be, don't be, um, he says, don't rejoice that the spirits are subject unto you, but that your names are written in heaven. So he began to share that these spirits are subject to you. In 1 John 4 and 4, it says, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Watch this, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you and I than he that is in the world. In other words, greater is the God that lives in you by the person of the Holy Spirit than he, Satan, who is in this earth. He is the God, little g, of this world system. And we've been given dominion and authority over him. Now, I got to go. Now, come on, let's go to um, Matthew 18, 18. Oh, I didn't even start my time before, so I'm going to give myself a little less time here. Watch this. Matthew 18 and 18 says this. He says, Verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. 
and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Translated, it means whatever you permit is permitted from heaven. Whatever you don't permit on this earth is not permitted from heaven. You got to get this. This means, and I'm going to go back and share this a little bit more. This means whatever you allow is allowed. Whatever you don't allow is not allowed. Oh, so when you see this scripture and you see this authority that's been given to you to permit or not permit things, does this mean, watch this, is God in control or are you in control? Because I know we always say God is in control, but that's not totally accurate. And God, God's sovereign. He'll do whatever he wants to. That's true. And in his sovereignty, he has delegated us authority to say whatever you allow, I'm going to have to allow. Oh, Lord, because I'm getting here to something. Because if you don't do nothing about it, I can't do anything about it. I'm going to prove it. I'm going to prove it. That's already one scripture I'm using. But watch this. Oh, man. Oh, man. This 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 was um, um, uh, several years ago. A uh, man by the name of Brother Kenneth Hagin, great prophet of God. He's going on home to be with the Lord. He had several visions um, where the Lord Jesus appeared unto him and began to teach him certain things. And the reason why he appeared unto him, this was in the early 50s, between early and mid to late 50s, that he had several encounters where the Lord began to teach him certain principles that he commanded him to teach to the body of Christ. And so one of the things as there's one of these occasions where the Lord appeared to him, he was in a, a meeting in a particular state and city. And he says, while he was preaching, the Lord appeared unto him. And he said he was about to where the ceiling was in that place he was preaching. And while the Lord was talking to him, there all of a sudden, there was this little demon that began to come up. He said he looked like a little monkey. And he said this demon began to just cause this big ruckus. And I mean, just begin to make this shrill noise, just like just screaming. And all of a sudden, and while this demon was doing this, this spirit was doing this, he couldn't understand what the Lord was saying. Then all of a sudden, this demonic force began to form a cloud so he could see Jesus, but he couldn't hear him. And so all of a sudden he formed this cloud in front of between him and Jesus where he couldn't see him. And he knew that the Lord was trying to get a message across to him. But all of a sudden, this demonic force was disrupting the transmission. And he said, out of frustration, he just says, in the name of Jesus, shut up. And that thing stopped and it, it went down to the floor and just flopped on the floor. And he says, now I command you in Jesus name, get out of here. And that thing tucked tail and he was in the church preaching. And that thing, he said, he saw it run out the door through the aisle and run out the door. All of a sudden, the smoke cleared. He could see Jesus and begin to hear Jesus. And the Lord told him, he said, if you didn't do anything about that, I couldn't. Brother Hagin, he's like, wait a minute. No, I didn't hear you right. You meant to say that that you wouldn't do anything, not that you couldn't. He said, Jesus said unto him again. He was like, no. He says, if you didn't do anything about it, I could not do anything about it. Brother Hagin, he clear, kind of cleared his ears like, Lord, I know that I'm, I'm not hearing you right. You meant to say that you would not do anything, not couldn't. He said the Lord got very stern with him and very piercing in his eyes and says, no, I said, if you didn't do anything, I could not do anything. He was like, Lord, I, I, I know that this is you speaking to me. He says, but your word declares that, listen, by the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. He says, I don't care if this you said standing here right before me telling me this. You have to show me in your word that this is true. And you know what he said the Lord did? He said the Lord just smiled at him and says, I'll do you one better. I'll give you four. And so what I'm going to teach you is out of those four things that he began to teach. Now, I already shared one with you that he says, I've given unto you power and authority in, in Luke 10, 19 over all the ability of the enemy and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. But he also went to the Matthew 8, 18 and says, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. But I also want to show you something here. And as I'm going through this and I'm going to give you another account of something, 
He says in Ephesians chapter one, verses 16 through 23, through 16 through 23, this is the apostle Paul speaking here. And he's showing you this prayer for the church at Ephesus. And he says this, how much time am I working with? Okay. He says, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That's so he wants to give you wisdom and to reveal knowledge to you. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Now watch this verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe? So, OK, what's the what's the what's this power, this great ability um, might, strength, authority that he's given to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ. Okay, which he performed in Christ. Watch this, when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand. That's the seat of honor, the seat of authority, the seat of power at his right hand in heavenly places. Now watch this, this is the thing. Far above all principality, and power and might and dominion and every name that is named. Watch this. Not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. He says, so not only in this natural realm, every name that is named, he has been seated far above all of those things. This, this is showing his preeminence. This is showing his power. He says, not only in the natural world, but also in the spirit world. Okay, now watch this. This is important for you to understand this. And Paul opens up and says, I need, I'm praying for your eyes to be open to this, for you to understand this authority, power, and ability that you have that God demonstrated when he raised Jesus from the dead. Watch this and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality, power, might, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and have put all things under his feet, and have put all things under his feet. Okay, what does this have to do to me? With me, I'm getting ready to show you. And have put all things under his feet, and gave him Christ to be head over all things to the church. Who is the church? We are. We are the body of Christ. Everybody that's named Jesus as Lord and Savior and confessed him as Lord and Savior and made him Lord and Savior. You are a part of the body of Christ. You are the church, the ecclesia, the called out ones. You are a part of this body. You are a part of this promise. He says this, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Now watch this individually. We don't have the fullness, but collectively we have the fullness. That's why Satan tries to bring division to now divide our power so that we're not as effective as we need to be in the earth because he's trying to shut down the ability and the authority that we have because he's afraid of you and I. Now watch this, Ephesians chapter two, verses one through six. And he says this, he says this, Ephesians two, one and six, that's a continuation that Paul is continuing here. And he says, and you hath he quickened, you and I hath he quickened or made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. This is the born again process. You come out of death into life. You now were spiritually dead, now you're spiritually alive. Wherein, in times past, we walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. This is speaking of Satan, the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. These are those really that he's talking about that are not born again. People who walk in darkness. I got to I got to tell you this because I got to get ready to explain something to you. He says, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past. So we used to walk just like they walk in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, whereby the watch is this, whereby nature um, and we're by nature. And we were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, 
who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. In other words, he made us he made us come alive together with Christ. By grace, you are saved and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So he says we're seated together with Christ in heavenly places, but go back. And he said that Christ is seated far above all principality and powers and might and dominion. And because we're a part of his body, we're connected with him. Jesus being the head, we being the body, we're seated in heavenly places far above all of these things. Okay, you got to understand this. He's like, well, pastor, we've heard you teach on this. We've heard you say this. We've heard you say this. No, you got to believe what's being taught and you got to begin to exercise and function in what's being taught because so many times Christians are still being ruled by things that they have dominion over. And so you got to realize, wait a minute. Okay, let's, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. And so now he says, okay, you've raised us up together to be seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, I want to read something to you. Normally, I haven't done this. I rarely do this, but I wanted to read an excerpt out of this book by Brother Hagen that he began to depict um, is in this book entitled, I Believe in Visions. And he gives a specific account of these things. And so I wanted to make sure that I was accurately speaking something to you because I want to talk to you about these classification of demonic forces. Um, that we talk about in Ephesians, in the book of Ephesians, chapter six, verse 10, uh, verse 12. Um, I want to just read that real quick. Ephesians, um, Ephesians six and 12. And it says this. It says. He started in verse 10. He started dealing with fallen brother, be strong in the Lord, power of his might, put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the tactics of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness and high heavenly places. So we see these four classification of demonic forces. Uh, we see, watch this. Number one, we see um, principalities. Number two, we see powers. Number three, we see rulers of the darkness of this world. Number four, we see wicked spirits in high or heavenly places. Now, I want to begin um, to read this excerpt um, dealing with a situation that the Lord began to teach him. And he says, Jesus went on to say, and I'm reading and I quote, there are four classes of demons or evil spirits. As he began to teach Brother Hagen on devils, demons and evil spirits, he says, there are four classes of demons or evil spirits. And he said that they are divided into four groups as mentioned in Ephesians. And so, which I just read, he said, the Lord said that the four divisions, what I just read you, the principalities, the powers, the rulers of darkness of this world and wicked spirits in high places or in the heavenlies. He said the highest spirits with which you have to deal with are the rulers of darkness of this world. He says the high spirits that we have to deal with here are the rulers of darkness of this world. He went on talking to me about the fact that the word of God says that the whole world lies in darkness, but we who are believers are children of light and not of darkness. And then he referred to a number of scriptures, including this one in second Corinthians six fourteen. He says, watch this, but you are not unequally yoked together. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness and what communion hath light with darkness? And so now we see that believers are called light. Unbelievers are called darkness. So what fellowship do you have with them? And so in the second chapter of Corinthians of Colossians, Jesus, um, uh, he tells of Christ's death on the cross and the resurrection from the dead. And watch this. Watch this. And he says, and having spoiled principalities and powers, having spoiled them, having spoiled, he made a show of them openly triumphing over it. So in other words, Christ in his death, burial and resurrection spoiled or defeated these same principalities and powers that we must deal with. So they are already defeated. 
You got to remember this. Now, why am I saying all of this? I got to teach you this so that you know that the thing that you're dealing with is still beneath you, has already been dealt with by Jesus himself. And so we are to enforce the victory that he already provided. You are already victorious. You're not trying to gain victory over that situation. You are just enforcing your victory by now declaring, decreeing, and speaking to it and over it and commanding the thing that's subject to you. You are not subject to that addiction. You are not subject to that lifestyle. It is subject to you. You got to hear me. The devil cannot make you do anything you don't want to do any longer. You have ability to resist. Now, I'm going I'm to I'm keep going here. Now, watch this because I, I got it. Now, this is going to be the kind of the meat of what I'm talking about. And I'm going to give it to shut it down in a little bit. Watch this. The Lord, I, and I quote, the Lord went on to say that the highest types of demons with which you have to deal with on earth, the rulers of the darkness of this world. He says this. This is the Lord himself saying this rule all unsaved people, all who are in darkness. They rule over them and dominate them. That is why people do and say things that they don't intend to do. That's why some good people say I would never do anything like that. And before years pass, they have done something even worse. This is because they are dominated by the rulers of the darkness of this world. They are in the kingdom of darkness and whether you want to admit it or not, even your close friends and relatives or whoever it may be, if they are unsaved, are dominated by these spirits who are rulers of the darkness of this world. Now see what Satan would try to do as I, before I keep going on, Satan would try to make you think, okay, this person is good. So they are okay. This person, okay. You know, they, you know, it's like good without God still ain't good. People try to be good people, but they're still ruled by these demonic forces. Why? Because they have not submitted to the covenant. They have not submitted to the Lordship of Jesus. They have not gotten born again. So they are still subject to these demonic forces. It all, now Jesus go, went on to say, it is always one of these rulers of the darkness of this world that possesses a person. They rule not only those who are within the darkness of this world, but they also tell the powers what to do. See, there's rank and order in the demonic realm. Because even Jesus says, Can, will Beelzebub like cast out Satan, cast himself out? He's like, no, he talks about the rule and rank. He talks about this rule and rank. Watch this. He says. They tell the powers what to do. Then the powers rule over the principalities and tell them what to do. He said the lowest type of demons have very little to do. They do very little thinking of their own and are told what to do. Watch this. Now hear it. Now I need you to hear this because this is going to help you to deal with people who are struggling in areas and that it will help you to identify when Satan is trying to gain entrance and access into your life and what you need to do about it. He says, now I will show you. This is what the Lord began to continue to tell him in this vision. I think he met with him. He talked to him for about an hour and a half and he started teaching him these things, these principles. And he says, now I will show you how these evil spirits get hold of people when they are allowed to. The Lord said unto me, he said that the Lord said this unto me. And he said, suddenly in the vision, I saw a woman. Now, I've mentioned this before, but I'm going to get more detail with it now. He says, I saw a woman. I immediately recognized her as being the former wife of a minister. I had been introduced to her and her husband on one occasion. Other than that, I didn't know either of them and had no communication with either of them in any way. He says, I only knew that they had since been um, that this woman left her husband. She was in ministry with her husband. She left her husband. This woman, and this is what the Lord began to teach Brother Hagan. He told him about this woman. He says, this woman was a child, was a child of mine. The Lord said she was in ministry with her husband. She was filled with the spirit and the gifts of the spirit were operating in her life. One day, an evil spirit came to her and whispered in her ear. 
You are a beautiful woman. You could have had fame, popularity and wealth, but you have been cheated in life by following the Christian walk. Does that sound familiar? Does that sound similar? to some things that maybe have come to your mind. See all of these other people, they balling out, they doing all of this stuff. But now that you walk in this walk with Christ, it seemed like you now walking in a lesser role and all of these people look like they having all this fun and they gaining all this success. And because you trying to live for God, it feels like, see that Satan coming, trying to do, he's doing the same thing he did with this woman. He does it with people all the time. And so you need to know the wiles, the tactics of the devil so that you don't get off what's about to happen to this woman. Now watch this. He says, um, you're a beautiful woman. You could have had fame, popularity, and wealth, but you've been cheated in life by following in the Christian walk. He said, the woman realized that this was an evil spirit. And she said, get thee behind me, Satan. And the spirit left her for a period. By and by, the same spirit returned. He sat on her shoulder and whispered in, your, in her ear, you are a beautiful woman, but you have been robbed by talk, by taking this lowly walk of Christianity and living a separated life. Again, she recognized this is Satan and said, Satan, I resist you in the name of Jesus. And he left her for a while. And all I began to think about as I read this was in Luke four, when Jesus was in the wilderness. And after he went through three types of temptations that all of a sudden the Bible says that Satan left him for a season. You got to know how Satan works. He tries to wear you down over a period of time with suggestions to your mind because he wants to gain access to you and he wants you to now begin to crumble and he wants you to fall and he wants your fall to be great so that everybody can see it. So they are second guess following God is worth it. Now, now watch this. Now I want to get into some, I'll teach on it a little bit later, but there are three things that you're always attacked in. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. It happened with Adam and Eve in the, in the garden, and it happened with Jesus in the wilderness. See, the lust of the flesh, when Satan told um, Jesus he was fasting 40 days and nights, turn this stone that it might be made bread. In other words, feed your appetite. You're starving in an area and feed it. Use your own ability to feed yourself in this area. Number two, he says, watch this, the lust of the eyes. He took him on a pinnacle and showed him all the kingdoms of the earth. And he says, if you worship me, I'll give you all of this. Then the pride of life. He says, if thou be the son of God, he tried to attack his identity. He says, go ahead and jump off of this cliff because does not it say, um, um, have not it been written that the angels of God shall keep you up, at least you dash your foot against the stone. What he was trying to do, he even tried to use scripture against Jesus. But Jesus rebuked him at every at every point. Watch this. But the Bible says he still left him for a season. See, yeah, sometimes you have success moments where you successfully resist. But then he comes back again. And see, he's showing what happens. Now, watch this. Let's continue. And she said this. And again, recognize this woman recognized it was Satan and said, Satan, I resist you in the name of Jesus. And he left her for a while. But Watch this. But he came back. The Lord began to continue. He says, but he came back again and sat on her shoulder, whispering the same things in her ear. Watch this, though. He says this time she began to entertain these thoughts. Does that sound familiar? For she liked to think that she was beautiful. She wanted to think that she was beautiful. See, he told her something she wanted to hear to seduce her into submitting to what he wanted. That's how he works. He'll keep coming to try to wear you down, but he'll tell you the thing sometimes you want to hear about yourself. That's why you got to be able to discern when he's trying to woo you. You got to know the wiles of the devil. You got to know how he functions and works. And watch this. And then at, watch, this is a very important part. As she began to think along the lines the devil suggested to her, she became obsessed with that thinking. Then, watch it, she became obsessed in her mind with thinking about that. That means she was rolling it over. She kept it there. Instead of rejecting it again, this time she started entertaining it, thinking about it. Then in the vision, he says, his brother Hagin says, I saw the woman become as transparent as glass. And I saw a black dot in her mind. 
And he said that, and this is Jesus speaking now, quoting, I quote, that dot represents the fact that she is obsessed in her thinking with this spirit. This is a born again woman. He couldn't possess her, but he strongly oppressed her in her mind by constantly hounding her with a thought. She recognized it, rejected it on different occasions, but then this one time he caught her at a vulnerable moment probably. And so she began to entertain it. It became as this black dot. He says that represents the fact that she is obsessed in her thinking with this spirit, the Lord said. At first she was oppressed on the outside, but as she allowed the devil's suggestion to take hold of her thoughts, her mind became obsessed. She was oppressed and then became obsessed. Oppression was the outward mental pressure to submit to that thought, but when she finally allowed that thought to reside and remain and dwelled on it, she became obsessed with it. Her thinking began to be overrided by the suggestions that constantly came to her. See, this is how Satan comes into a believer's life to gain entry and to get you in bondages and addictions and in lifestyles that contradict the word of God. Oh, I'm teaching that. Well, I'm telling you, I'm, we, we digging into this because God answering some stuff for somebody that's listening right now. Watch this. And the Lord said at first she was oppressed from the outside, but as she allowed the devil's suggestions to take hold of her thoughts, her mind became obsessed. She wanted to think, I'm a beautiful woman. I could have wealth and popularity, but I've been robbed in life. Still, it, watch this. Jesus said still it wasn't too late for her. Watch this. She could have resisted. She could have refused to think of to think those thoughts. Then the evil spirit would have fled from her and she would have remained free. But watch this. She chose otherwise. She could have maintained her freedom by rejecting the thoughts and the suggestions. Even after she got it from the point of being oppressed to being obsessed, she still could have walked in her authority and commanded that thing to leave her. But she decided to keep entertaining the thought. That's what happened when people begin. And now watch this. Not only when it starts out as a thought, when you submit to that thought and begin, this is what happened with this woman. And finally, she left her husband and went out into the world seeking the fame and wealth which the devil offered. She took up with one man after the other. Watch this. So what she did was she went from being oppressed to being obsessed and then she acted out on what was attacking her mind and now it began to be ingrained in her because watch what begins to happen so when she left her house and she went out and she took up with one man after another after a time <clears throat> that thing got down into her spirit so it went from her mind from oppression to obsession to now that thing went down into her spirit now. In the vision, I saw the black dot move from her head to her heart. And then the woman said, remember out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I don't want the Lord anymore. Just leave me alone. This is what Jesus said, this woman said. And I said, this is Brother Hagin speaking now. He said, I said, Lord, why are you showing this to me? Do you want me to pray for this woman? Do you want me to cast the devil out of her? The Lord said, no, I don't want you to pray and cast the devil out of her. The Lord answered because you couldn't do it anyway. He said she wants that spirit. And as long as she wants it, she can have it. He says, then Brother Hagin said, then why did you show this to me, Lord? He says, I have shown this to you for two reasons. First, so you can see how an evil spirit will get a hold of a person, even a child of God. If they will let that, if they will let him, if they will let that spirit. He said, second, I want you to deal with that spirit who was operating through that woman and harassing and, uh, and intimidating the ministry of her former husband. 
So this woman was talking about her former husband, dogging him out, out, trying to discredit him before people. Now, this has happened. See, we call them haters. See, people that's trying to destroy your character, that's trying to destroy your name, that's trying to destroy your life. Jesus is getting ready to show how to deal with that because it was the spirits moving through her that was causing this to happen towards her husband and his ministry. Now watch this. He says, how do I do that? I asked. The minister was in the same state that I was in, but the woman was in another state. The Lord told him there is no distance in the realm of the spirit. The Lord said, watch this, simply speak to that spirit and command him in my name, saying, you foul spirit that is operating in the life of this woman. He called her name that is harassing and embarrassing the ministry of the servant of the Lord. And he called the husband's name. I command you to desist in your operations and I stop and watch this. I command you to cease in your operations and to stop in your maneuvers this moment. And he said this, brother Hagan went on to say this in the spirit. I said those words and immediately that spirit ceased to operate through her to intimidate the minister. From that day forward, the minister never again was troubled by her or that spirit. Then Brother Hagen asked the Lord, Lord, what will happen to her? I asked. He said this. This is important, y'all. She will spend eternity in the regions of the damned where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. He answered. And in the vision, I saw her go down into the pit and I heard her awful screams. This woman was your child, Lord. She was filled with your spirit and had part in the ministry. Yet you said not to pray for her. I can't understand this. Brother Hagin went on to say the Lord reminded me of the, the following scripture. This is out of first John five sixteen. If any man see his brother sin a sin that is not unto death, he shall ask and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. I said, but Lord, this brother Hagan continuing. I have always believed that the sin referred to in this scripture is physical death and that the person is saved, although he has sinned. But the scripture doesn't say physical death. The Lord pointed out, he said, the Lord said, but that scripture doesn't say physical death. He says, you are adding something to it. If you will read the entire fifth chapter of first John, you will see that it is talking about life and death, spiritual life and spiritual death. And this is a spiritual death. And this is spiritual death. This refers to a believer who could sin a sin unto death. And therefore, I say that you shall not pray for it. I told you not to pray for this woman because she sinned a sin unto death. Now, this is now I got to finish this because this is going to be very important for you to understand. He said, this really disrupts my theology, Lord. Would you explain some more? And I asked. And so he said he asked. And so he said, sometimes we need our theology disrupted, which we do a lot of times because it's not in line with the word. He said, Jesus reminded me, and I've taught this out of Hebrews chapter six, verses four through six. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. OK, he said this. This is Brother Hagan talking. I'm going to end here and I'm going to pick up. He says, yes, I know that scripture, but my denomination said that those who were once enlightened um, does not refer to Christians. It means lost persons who get under conviction. He said, the Lord said, remember, I told you this woman was my child. She was filled with the Holy Spirit. She had part in the ministry. You will notice that the scripture says it's impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift. He says, I am the heavenly gift. A man under conviction is enlightened, but he has not tasted of me. Then the, the Bible, he begins to talk to him about this. He says, this woman, she qualified for this unpardonable sin. 
this thing because she made, watch this, there were certain classifications that many people say, okay, if they think that they committed the unpardonable sin, no, you didn't. Just the fact that you were convicted already told you that you weren't, that you didn't do it. Because watch this, it shows in Hebrews, there's some qualifications for this. This is a woman who um, tasted of the heavenly gift. She was made a partaker of the Holy Ghost. She was filled with the word. She wasn't an immature believer. She was a mature believer. She walked in the gifts of the spirit. She knew God. She knew the Lord. She was not a novice in the word of God. And so watch this over a period of time. No, she entertained thoughts. Watch this. She rejected the thoughts. She was oppressed. She resisted the thoughts. Then she became obsessed when she entertained the thoughts and began to meditate on it. It eventually got down into her heart where she began to act out and live this lifestyle out. But for somebody that's out there that's been struggling, God told me to tell you that you can come out of that lifestyle and begin to now walk because there are many people who are convicted and you're ready for change. And he says this, this woman committed this because she qualified with all of these things. Many, most people don't even qualify for that. What happens is they get, they're in the position of being either upset, I mean, being oppressed or obsessed with what's going on. And so then though, they begin to walk out lifestyles. This even considers even with people who are living homosexual and lesbian lifestyles. They have thoughts that have come to their minds. They submit it. They entertain the thought patterns and begin to live out the lifestyle. Now I'm talking about people who are born again. People who are not born again, remember, the Lord said that they are ruled by these spirits. And the way to come out is to get born again. That's why you got to get born again. Somebody may say, I was born this way. This is why you need to get born again and get a brand new spirit. But what about somebody that has been born again and is living a lifestyle that they don't want to live and has been controlled by thoughts? It doesn't just have to be that. It can be any behavior or lifestyle that contradicts the word of God. He says, now you need to understand you have authority over these things now and you can begin to go back and take my word and begin to now meditate on my word, exercise the authority that's been given unto you. Because the moment you got born again, you came out of darkness into the marvelous light. And now you have now been elevated to be seated together with Christ in heavenly places, far above the thing that you were submitted and subject unto, now is subject to you. You can now take that and say, in the name of Jesus, because even in James 4 and 7, God says, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Whenever you resist the devil, in the name of Jesus, he has to flee. He leaves you. But what he will try to do is because he once had access to your life, he will try to regain access and now try to come in and live a life in you and through you. See, I remember this. See, I've gone through these things where the spirit of God came and I had a vision. It was a, um, a, a, I was in a trance and all of a sudden the spirit of God showed me and took me back to my childhood and say that spirit that you had struggled with. He says, that's how it entered into your life when somebody molested you at an early age. And now that spirit of homosexuality now because there was a taste developed for the same flesh. And so he says, from this moment forward, you are forever free. He told me to go talk to a, um, one of the ministers at the church. And because God had dealt with me, he says this, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. It's something about bringing that thing out when you expose the enemy. And now, and he told me this, he says, Mike, he says, Satan is going to come back for a counterattack. He says, because even when an evil spirit is cast out of a man, it goes into dry places, seeking rest and finding none. Then it says, I'm going to come back to the house from which I came. And if he finds it empty, swept and garnished, he will find seven spirits more wicked than himself. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Satan is saying, in other words, you kick me out the first time. But if you allow me to gain re-entry, I'm going to try to bring reinforcements to solidify your bondage so that it's harder for you to come out of it again. But in the name of Jesus, I come to you under the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ as an authorized dealer of the word and the power of God. I command freedom into your life. I command that spirit to stop harassing you now. And I command it to come off you and out of you in Jesus name. You have authority. 
that you resist. I rebuke that thing. So anytime an illicit thought comes up into your mind, because see, that's all Satan does. And what he tries to do is tries to convince you that the thought that attacks you is your identity. That's who you are. That's a lie from the pit of hell. That is not who you are. So stop believing him. He has tried to wear you down in your thinking to make you think because I had a thought of a same sex attraction. That means that's who I am. No, God has already told you what his will is and he will begin to change your desires as you begin to now flush out. I can tell you I'm all man, baby. You hear me? I love my wife, love my children thriving in life. I'm telling you that God can deliver you. He can set you free and whom the son has set free is free indeed. And Satan would try to come to you and say, see, see, if you really free, how come these thoughts keep coming to you? If you really free, how can these feelings keep trying to rise up in you. It's trying to gain access so it can dominate you. But in Jesus name, I declare that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And the greater one will begin to rise up and that authority in you will begin to rise up. And you will say, get the heck out of here, Satan. You go back to the pit of hell from whence you came. I don't care what it is. Listen, I don't care if you've been chemically bound, dependent on chemical substances, alcohol, drugs, whatever. See, alcohol, see, that's why I call it spirits. Some of you been, you see, you've been dealing with alcoholism. God has set some of you free from alcoholism. Some of God has set some of you free from doing drugs, from cocaine, whatever it is. I'm telling you, and watch this, watch this, watch this. Whenever the things get rough, what Satan would try to do is to get you to go back to the natural thing to now solve a spiritual issue. And because you haven't learned how to tap into the spirit of peace and the prince of peace, you will try to smoke weed. You will try to drink some liquor to try to calm you down because you have not gotten into the presence of the almighty God. He says, be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be ye filled with the spirit. Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always. Listen, I get drunk in the Holy Ghost and I'm telling you, drunk in the Holy Ghost, no adverse effects. The only good is only good effects. You only feel peace. You only feel joy, glory to God. And I'm telling you now, the word of God is attacking stuff in people's lives. And I declare that you are walking in freedom. You are walking in victory and whom the son has set free is free indeed. You can email me. You can comment, whatever. I'm telling you, listen, let God be true in every man a lie. And I declare you will not be hounded. You will not be harassed any longer. And you will rise up in the authority. You will rise up in that conviction and you will begin to declare and decree. You are beneath me, you foul spirit. And I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And I've already been made free and whom the son hath set free is free indeed. I've been made free. I'm already free. I'm not trying to get free. I am free in Jesus name. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. You foul. See, it's been, see, it's been hidden. See that spirit. You didn't recognize it as a demonic spirit. You didn't recognize it as one of Satan's demonic forces that have been assigned to your life to, to try to get you into bondages, to try to get you into addictions, to shut down your progress, to stop your destiny and purpose. And I'm telling you, there is an outbreak of the power of God that is taking place. And you're going to see more people come out of darkness and walk in full blown victory. And Satan will try to shut down the voices of the people of God. And I come as a prophet of God. I come as a voice crying in the wilderness and I declare and decree divine healing. I declare freedom in your life in Jesus name. And I declare that all is well with you. And I shut down every attack against you. I shut down every demonic assignment against you. And I plead the bloodline around you. I plead the blood of Jesus over your house. I plead the blood of Jesus over your children. I plead the blood of Jesus over your money. And I speak it over my children and I speak it over my house because Satan tried to come to my mind and say, listen, your children, listen, it was, it was like, who was it? Eli, who knew that they were children were doing wrong, but he didn't do nothing about it. it was, no, it was Job. Job was afraid 
that his children were walking in darkness. And so the thing that he feared came upon him. And I've been there when Satan tried to bring fear that that same spirit would try to enter into their lives. And see, my children didn't even know this. I've been speaking over them for years that that foul spirit would not gain access to their life. God, if you got to open up their eyes in the spirit, you open it up. Now, angels, I dispatch you and I command you to go in Jesus name. And I call that thing out in the name of Jesus. And I declare and decree that you are free, that you are whole, and you got to teach the word of God to resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Listen, no, I'm going to preach this doggone. I'm going to preach it boldly. I don't care if that thought comes to you to try to get you to submit to some wicked and perverted desire. You have to reject it. You have to resist it because Satan wants to get you in bondage by thinking about it, by meditating on it, by fantasizing about it. And so it develops an appetite. And so what God is saying, whatever you feed grows. So if you wanted to die, stop feeding it. Stop looking at stuff that feeds that crap. That's why it's in the airwaves. It's in the media. Satan is trying to, he is setting the platform for the antichrist to show up. I'm telling you now, we are in this new dispensation and age, but I'm telling you the Lord is coming back soon. And now I'm telling you there is going to be great freedom and deliverance. Some of you have been fasting and praying for wholeness in your families. And I declare this is your day of salvation. This is your day of freedom. I declare that all is well and Satan will not harm you in any way, shape, fashion, a form and don't you keep going back to your past. Don't you keep living in your past. I don't care what happened to you. You've been made free and whom the son has set free is free indeed. Now I want you to walk in your authority. He says as you resist them, you resist them. He will flee. He will flee. He will flee. He has no power over you. He has no authority over you. He has no dominion over you. You rule him. You master Satan. You master principalities and powers, rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high and heavenly places. You are in authority. You have the dominion voice. Speak right now. Woo, glory to God. No, I ain't gonna say forever hold your peace. You better declare and decree. Every day I walk in freedom and whom the son is set free. That's how you come out is free. Indeed. I called freedom. I called deliverance from myself and I begin to see the delivering power of God and that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead abides in you. He lives in you. He dwells in you. Don't you ever forget who you are. Glory to God. See, Satan hates messages like this. No more. No more. I declare joy in your life too. I declare that you laugh again. Yeah, it's time to, to allow the joy, the glory. I hear that. I hear that. I hear that. I hear that. The joy of the Lord is your strength. You hear me? The joy of the Lord is your strength. You are not walking miserable. You're not walking sad. Go on and receive. You're not walking miserable. You ain't walking sad. You ain't walking defeated. The joy is your strength. Don't you watch this. The Bible says you will not receive the spirit of bondage again unto fear. Come on, Holy Ghost. You will not receive the spirit of bondage again unto fear. In other words, you're not going to be afraid of going back into that thing any longer. God is bringing you out. I don't care how long it's been, Satan. No, nah, because he starts saying, see, they've been on there too long. They're going to log off. Uh-uh. I'm preaching this thing because now God told me to preach this thing, to sow this word into your life so that you can walk in freedom and victory and that you can teach others what God is depositing in you today. It's time for you to replicate, duplicate freedom in Jesus name, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I declare freedom in the name of Jesus, in the name that's above every name. That's the name of cancer. That's the name of diabetes. That's the name of homosexuality. That's the name of perversion. Whatever name, whatever it's called, Jesus already above it. Whatever it is, you already raised above it. Whatever it is, you already have dominion over it in Jesus name. And the church say amen. And it is so, says the spirit of the living God. Mm. Uh, 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 See, Satan, what, what he tries to do, until you renew your mind to this, he'll keep trying to bring thoughts to try to see, don't believe that, don't believe that, don't believe what he just said, uh, 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 you shut it down. You drown out enemy talk by speaking. Uh, uh, I believe it in Jesus' name. The Bible declares whom the son is set free is free indeed. I'm already free. I'm not trying to get free. I am free. Now, uh-huh. 
and I resist you and reject you. See, once you realize it's an outside thought, not your thought, that you realize, wait a minute, this is not my thinking. This is Satan's thinking trying to come in. So even if it tries to come, oh, did thoughts ever try to come back up to me? Yes. Yes, but I knew what to do with it. I was so full of God and full of the spirit and full of the anointing and the word. I reject you in Jesus name, period. And keep it moving. What some people do is, oh, Lord, oh, it's coming back again. Oh, what I'm going to do? Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. Get out of that. Get out of that. I'm telling you, I sense, man, I sense an authority on me. I sense an authority on me. He's a, he's a liar from the pit of hell. I cannot stand Satan. He tried to rob me of my ministry, rob me of my destiny. And I'm telling you, that's why God called me. He says, go teach my people who they are. You better hear me. You are free. You hear me? You are free. You are free. Y'all, I'm telling you, somebody is receiving this. Somebody needs to hear it this way. I'm sowing this thing in your spirit. That when you sleep, it's going to come up to your mind. In your dreams, you're going to hear you free. Forget all of that crap. Trying to rob you. They have men, man, I've seen it. Men who try to deny that something has happened in them. And all of a sudden now they've had these evil desires towards same sex. And then what they try to do is they try to sleep with multiple women to convince themselves that something ain't wrong with them. Versus beginning to go into the word and declare who they are and walk and wash out. Wash this with the washing of the water of the word. I know this ain't popular. Most people don't talk about it no more. It's like we got to start dealing with this because what Satan tries to do is he is it has been a plot by the enemy. He has tried to quiet the voice of the word of God, the spirit of God. Now, I'm not just going to say the church. He's trying to quiet God's voice in the earth. Even where sin is concerned. Where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. You have been delivered. You have been set free. Now you're going to live out your righteousness, live out your freedom. Whom the son has set free is free indeed. Hey Amen. I think I'm about to shut myself down. I, I'm man. I'm telling you. I, I know I've been. I, Lord, it's twelve o'clock. I, you know, I'm not going to apologize. I knew I had to preach this message until I was finished. So I declare in Jesus' name. I declare freedom. I declare wholeness. I declare nothing missing, broken, or lacking. Man, this word has been sealed. Glory to God. I declare it. It is sealed in your spirit. It is sealed in your mind. Hallelujah. Yeah. And cut off access points that have been feeding, feeding those thoughts to you that moves you to whether it's you know your triggers. You're going to have to cut off certain access points. You're going to have to cut off some people who get you into that direction. God will give you new friends. Father, we thank you. Now, in the name of Jesus, man, this is strong. This is strong. This is strong what's happening today. This is strong what's happening today. The word giveth light. So, Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. Now, we declare and decree that all is well. Now, every person under the sound of my voice, there may be somebody out there today that you never made Jesus the Lord of your life, but you want to today. I want you to come out of darkness into the light. I want you to simply make this confession of your faith after me. Say, Lord Jesus. I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I make you the Lord of my life. Glory to God. I have eternal life. I'm born again. Say, Satan, I no longer belong to you. Jesus is my Lord and I will serve only him. All the days of my life. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I want you to say this. Now, you're born again. You know it. But now you, you need power in your life. See, the, the, the greatest experience after or subsequent to salvation is the baptism with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. When I have received the Holy Spirit to come into my life, man, I got such power. I was 16 years old. I remember that day like it was yesterday. I recommitted my life to the Lord, got filled with the Holy Ghost. And he, I'm telling you, out of my belly, the Bible says, came rivers of living water. And I began to pray in an unknown tongue and language. It's a heavenly language that now you can pray between you and God about situations that's going on, that you build yourself up. And I'm telling you now, I want you to receive the Holy Spirit now. I will just say, Holy Spirit, come inside me now. Fill me, fill me to overflowing and grant me the ability to speak with other tongues as you give me the utterance. In Jesus' name, Amen. Now, come on, let's begin to pray. Listen, you might be there. Listen, don't not out of your head, but out of your heart. Begin to open up your mouth, add voice, begin to speak. The Holy Spirit is going to help you right now, right now, right now, right now. Don't say hallelujah, glory to God, or thank you, Jesus. Now, that's all good. But no, I don't want you to say anything in English. I want you to begin to open up your mouth. He's going to, you're trusting him to fill your mouth. What is this? This. this is your heavenly language where you can build yourself up, charge your spirit. You come alive. You're being strengthened spiritually. He also will quicken or make alive your physical body. You will feel better. And I'm telling you, come on, keep praying. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, pray every day like this. Build yourself up every day. Get understanding of this. Listen, we're here to help. This goes into my third point and third invitation. There may be somebody out there. You don't have a church home. You are not connected anywhere. Get connected here. I'm telling you, I, we welcome you here at Spirit of Fire Fellowship to teach you the word of God, to develop you in the word of God, to get you to that place in your life that you need to be. I declare, I declare that your best is yet to come. If that's you, connect with us today. You can send an email to us at connect at spiritoffire.us. Connect at spiritoffire.us. They may be putting it in the comment section so that you'll have it. I'm telling you, you can DM us, go onto our social media platforms, put it in the comments. We'll have somebody and somebody from our Connect team will get with you so that you'll know how to obtain and maintain what you came to receive and how, what, it, what it means to connect and the privileges and the benefits. If you want more information about the ministry, we will be more than happy to give that to you. We love you and appreciate you guys so much. Pastor Raquel and I, we're so proud of you. We love you. We're praying for you constantly. And we thank God for the best is still yet to come. Listen, y'all, I hope y'all got something out of this today. I hope that you were blessed by this word. But now we want to honor God in our giving. We want to honor him. We call it opportunity for prosperity time. This is your time to increase. That we honor God right now with our tithes, offerings, and gifts of love. The tithe is the tenth. The tenth of our income or increase. And we honor him. And he says to bring it ye all the tithes into the storehouse. What's the storehouse? The local church or the place of feeding, a place that you've been fed, that you're being fed um, spiritually, that we qualify as a storehouse to you. If this is your primary source of feeding, if God has called you to this work, if you're a member of this ministry, if you're already a member of this ministry, listen, your tithes come to your local church, whereby now we can get the job done of getting this vision fulfilled and moving forward in the earth. And so I'm telling you, for those that maybe you don't, um, you're a member of another church. Your tithes will go to your local church. But if and as you're led, you will give us an offering as God, the spirit of God leads you. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. I'm telling you. And I declare and decree in the name of Jesus. Now, some information is coming up on the screen as to how you can sow. There's a QR code. You can scan it. It'll take you to our website. It's a secured page. Your information is not sold or given to third parties, anything like that. It is secure that your giving is secure. And I declare, I declare in the name of Jesus, as you give, it's going to be given and granted unto you again. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. God causing men, yeah, to give unto your bosom. When you tithe, I'm going to say this real quick. When you tithe, when he says he'll rebuke the devourer for your sakes, not only does it mean in your financial realm, in the financial life, that means in all areas of life. The devourer is rebuked. Anything that comes to steal, kill, and to destroy, he rebukes. Stop no more. It's a protection plan. 
I'm telling you, sometimes it's stuff that hasn't happened that shows that this thing is working just as much as stuff that has happened. See, I'm telling you, stuff lasts longer, works better. I'm telling you, God is opening up doors that no man can shut. And I speak accelerated growth right now in Jesus' name. I declare now. Declare, come on, make the commitment. Every person needs a pastor. Every person needs a place to submit to. They need a covering. If you're not connected, get connected today. If you listen, you already a member of a church or whatever, if you want to become a partner with this ministry, hey, I like what you guys are doing. I want to support it through um, my financial support, through my prayers, even through um, servanthood. If you want to connect and serve in different areas that, that we'll make available, listen, we welcome you into the fold. We praise God for you. I'm telling you, man, God is doing something. Glory to God. Listen, y'all, he's doing something in me. I don't know about y'all, but I'm, man, my, my relationship with him is going to another place. I'm, I'm rekindling some things, reigniting some things. And I'm just telling you, uh, the power that I'm sensing and seeing, the revelation that he's showing me, the things that he's showing me behind closed doors. I'm so excited to begin to teach to the world. And God, has, he's just been preparing me. And I pray that he's been preparing you. I know he's been preparing you for, to be introduced to the world. It's your time. This is your time to shine. This is your time to shine. This is your time to shine, y'all. I'm telling you, this is the body of Christ's time to shine. And I'm so excited about it. So, Father, we bless you and we thank you. that We're out of debt. Every need is met. We have plenty more to put in store. And so we declare and decree that all is well with us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Well, y'all, I'm out of time, but certainly not out of message. But I definitely want to speak life over you and I want to speak a final benediction and blessing over you. And I want you to receive it right now. How do I receive it? I want you to just have the attitude and the position that I'm going to accept and believe what's being spoken over my life. You can trust me. I'm not going to speak anything crazy or, or evil or anything over you. I'm going to just bless you. I'm going to speak well over you that you will increase and prosper. So I declare that God's divine favor shine upon you. I thank God that policies, rules, regulations, laws, hearts, minds, and decisions are being changed and reversed on your behalf. I declare an increase of assets, especially in real estate and an expansion of territory. I declare right now that even ungodly authorities are granting petitions unto you now. I thank you for raises that'll be given, new jobs and positions, new businesses being established, new streams of income. I declare divine healing upon you right now. Every disease, germ, virus, bad bacteria, and infirmity that tries to infiltrate or touch your body dies instantly. I declare a reversal of some diagnosis that the doctors have given. I declare you coming off every medication that you've been taking now for years now. I declare right now cataracts are removed, that your eyes are not dim, neither your natural forces abated. Blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. I declare that every organ performs a perfect work in your body in Jesus name and that you are healed in Jesus name. You are healed of everything. You are healed of substance abuse for those that have done things to their bodies over the years. I command a restoring of livers. I command a restoring of kidneys right now. I command a restoring of anything that's been damaged, lost or destroyed that it'll be replaced with brand new in Jesus name. Glory to God. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Love you guys. See you next time. Peace.